Hey there. So one more video for the day. I am late for my bedtime. It's 11.05 and my bedtime is supposed to be somewhere near 10.30. I eventually want to join the 5 a.m. club, the group of elite leaders and millionaires and geniuses and spiritual gurus who wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning because it's the time when all enlightened beings are up and thriving and paying themselves first with their time before contributing to the world. And you know why I'm not in that club yet? Because I am still up at 11 p.m. making videos. But I wanted to share with you a tool that I've been using to help bring a level of awareness to my current sleeping patterns so that I can shift into a better direction. And I may do another video on habit loops and how those are set up. I have not created an effective habit loop for going to bed on time, which is why I'm still up among many other excuses that I make, which I can get into later. However, I wanted to quickly show you a really cool app that I like that at least lets me know how well I am sleeping, how much I am sleeping, and what times I'm actually going to bed and waking up every day. So I'm going to walk you through a quick tutorial of Pillow. So Pillow is an app that allows you to set an alarm for your sleep cycle that also tracks your sleep pattern. So this phone app, you put it near your pillow in your bed um, and you can set it on several different modes. So you can let track your sleep cycles and ring an alarm. You can only track your sleep cycles without an alarm. I use that on the weekends. You can actually record your audio from sleeping so you can see if you're snoring. I know this would have been really helpful when I was growing up with sleep apnea to know if you're breathing through the night, things like that. You can set it for just an alarm if you don't want to track your actual sleep cycle. And it also has some nap modes on here. I typically use it on the sleep cycles and alarm functionality. The only reason I don't use the sound recording is because I sleep with my guy and he snores and he claims that I snore, but I can't tell the difference between the two. So I don't want to pick up his snores and then think there's something wrong with me when I'm sleeping. So I just don't track the audio. But I do track my sleep cycles and I'll show you what that looks like in this app. So say if I wanted to wake up tomorrow at 5 a.m. and join the 5 a.m. club, even though I didn't go to bed on time, I'd have 5.9 hours of sleep, right? If I hit start, then this phone will go into sleep tracking mode. So it would just, uh, the screen will eventually go dark and it will track the amount of time elapsing in my sleep. And when I am awake, I can hold stop and then stop it from tracking. It will show me the quality of my sleep versus different information that I'm interested in. It can show me my waking mood if I opt to share my mood. Typically I wake up in a pretty good mood. Um, the only time I feel sad or a little meh is if I ate crazy the day before. But typically, I'm waking up feeling pretty good. I don't really wake up feeling awesome, um, which is the exception of uh, April 6th, apparently. So that's something I want to work on as well. It shows the time of sleep versus the time in bed, which to me has been the most insightful thing to see. So just because you're going to bed at 10 p.m., doesn't going to bed at 10 p.m. I'll say and waking up at 6 doesn't mean you're sleeping that entire time right we obviously in our sleep cycle have light sleep phases within the sleep cycle and this app can track that I can show you what the cycle actually looks like so it shows your sleeping time your time that you start sleeping this should be consistent across the board and for me it's obviously all over the place so I need to work on what time I'm actually getting in the bed and going to sleep and then it also shows you a sleep profile. So out of however many sessions you've tracked, so far I've tracked 158 sleep sessions, shows you how many hours you've spent in bed versus how many hours you've spent sleeping. So it looks like I am losing out on some precious time because I'm in the bed, but I'm not sleeping the entire time I'm in bed. And that may be because of lighting, of sound, of temperature. So these are things I can course correct so that I'm getting the most efficient sleep possible. I know mattress also impacts the quality of sleep. I am not in the market for a new mattress. So I'm going to work on all the other methods for increasing the quality of my sleep. 
So that screen shows your amount of sleep that you're getting on average versus your goal. My goal right now is just to get seven hours of sleep. When I was working for myself, I was getting over eight hours of sleep a night. But for some reason, working for someone else, I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to squeeze all the things I want to do into a day and not prioritizing that R&R, that good rest and relaxation and restoration. And then it also shows your sleep quality, which you can see here, 64%, that is a D. I don't do Ds or Cs. And Bs, if they're pluses, are good for me. So I want to work on increasing the quality of my sleep. I have had days where the quality of my sleep was in the 80s. And those are days that are very minimal stress, very clean eating, a lot of hydration, and I go to bed on time. So I got to work on that. But I want to show you what it looks like when a night of sleep is tracked. So here you can see <laughs> actually how I woke up feeling this morning. So yesterday I went to bed at 11.16 and I woke up at 6.50 a.m. this morning. I was in bed for seven and a half hours, but I only got a little under seven hours of sleep. So that means outside of the 10 minutes it took to get to sleep, I wasted somewhere around half an hour within the time that I was in bed. You know what you can get done in half an hour? How many webinars I can watch on two times the speed? Probably like two, but that's a lot of learning time, that's meal prep time, that's time for walking the park, that's a dope ass meditation session. So that means I really wanna get more efficient at this sleeping thing so I can use that 30 minutes more effectively. Whew. Whew time to start that sleep cycle you can see at what points in my sleep cycle I was awake I was in rapid eye movement sleep I was in light sleep and I was in deep sleep another thing that it shares is the snooze lab and it's a bunch of insight about your personal sleeping habits and tips that you can adopt to help you get better rest so you can see here that my longest sleep session was 10 hours and 3 minutes that was a weekend day, and I probably wasn't feeling that good because I don't want to be in the bed too long either. Um, but you can see that the best sleep I had was actually New Year's Day, and I got an 88% sleep quality. My current average is 68, so working on that. According to this app, my optimal bedtime is 1145. I think that number or that data is based on when I've had the highest quality sleep uh, and the highest sleep score. However, that's really not an optimal bedtime for the time that I wake up. So that's a dilemma. But I feel like that was close to the bedtime, the close to the time that I went to bed when I was self-employed and I could wake up naturally. Um, apparently I'm a lark. I am an early bird. I want to increase the earliness of my early birdness. But yeah, that's something for me. And then the sleep lab has a bunch of insights. So studies that have been conducted recently and the findings that they have about the impact of different things on sleep. So I wanted to share those things. Hopefully you got sleepy listening to this because I did. And now it's time for bed. I hope you have a beautiful day if you're watching this early in the day. And if you're watching this at night, let's go have some sweet dreams. Take it easy and I'll talk to you later. Bye.